there's this idea, should we do this debt forgiveness? And then they talk about, look, this is the unfair aspects and the, and the fair aspects, but it creates what, like, um, it's, it's presented to them like a live decision. Right. But when you compare this to a bunch of other things where clearly nobody gave a, like, there was no political sort of like, there's will no, should, against should it. we have tax cuts for the rich? Right. Should exactly. We, exactly. Should we invade Iraq? Directly. You know? Should the PPP loans have been forgiven? It wasn't, those things are just talked about as if they are part of the necessary, right. you know, kind of, right. you know, background, again, it's, background radiation. So. It's sort of that. Was it Thomas Frank? That sort of Thomas Frank point about like what the, what these, you know, neoliberals do is sort of left and right. It's like, hey, the future's coming. It's just, this is what's happening. Right. It's like, hey, PPP loans, these are just happening. But if it's something that they don't want, it's like, well, should this, let's slow down and see if, right. hey, let's as a society come together and think about, is this something good that we should do? But if it's something that they want, it's like, listen, jobs are going to China. There's nothing we can do about it. We right. have to get ready for the future. And that's yeah, what that's, you're, and, and that's, that's, that's precisely it. Welcome to Tyler is Gross, a podcast about me, a comedian, talking to his successful friends about uh, life and growth, self-improvement, stuff like that, so that I can beat them in whatever they're doing. And um, t- uh, we got a good one today. Um, it's my buddy Jared McCorkle. You've seen him before, hopefully. Um, he's very funny. He's very interesting, smart. He's like my, he's, he's my behind the scenes creative consultant. And then on the podcast episodes, he is my political correspondent. As always, you can check him out on his, uh, his podcast, the comic canon revival, where he talks about comic books. If you want to hear him talking about Captain America, Thor, go check that out. It's very, very good. I was on an episode, Static Shock. Uh, check it out. But right now we're going to be talking about student debt relief. Biden just came out and forgave a bunch of student debt. And uh, me and Jared came to talk about it. And, you know, I think it was a really good, really good, interesting episode. Starts off fun. We're talking about sex and relationships. And then we transition into the topic of the day. So definitely check that that stuff out. Um, subscriber. I don't know what's how many subscribers i got on youtube 152 three i'm not sure but it's growing and i and i'm and i'm happy about that and i appreciate it as well i had my show at the fallout theater last this past saturday and um man it was fun it was fun I had a good amount of people show up I had some friends and family come through my parents saw me and you know it's it's when you invite your parents out you always hope it goes well and i'm happy to say it went pretty good so i'm happy about that and thanks for everyone for who who did come out hopefully some there were some podcast listeners that came if not there's going to be more stuff coming up so just uh just keep just keep up to date i got a website tyler is gross that has all the information about me all the links to tiktok and instagram and Instagram, TJ Gross, TikTok, Tyler Gross, zero, I think, something like that. It's all on the website, Tyler is Gross. I got a Patreon as well. Uh, it's all on YouTube. It's all in the, all of my, it's all, it's all available in my link tree um, on Instagram. So just, just check it out. Um, would love for you to uh, uh, subscribe and, and just donate a little bit. I got a PayPal as well. If you want to donate, that's on, on YouTube and all the stuff in the in the in the in the description of this podcast um would love it if you please right now if you're watching go ahead like it go ahead uh, subscribe to it if you haven't go ahead and comment just say anything at all say hey what's your favorite part of the podcast that you listen to what's the what's the what's the best thing you heard of the best thing we said it really helps a whole bunch if you do that if you're listening on the podcast app like it review it five star it all that stuff it really goes a long way um but regardless i just appreciate you for being here and listening really really do um it's 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 exciting times and and i'm doing this stuff and it's it's tiring and it's exhausting but i feel like it's it's something's happening i feel like it's it's worth doing so thank you um and yeah i mean i think that's really all i got i don't got a lot of stuff coming up show wise uh if you do again i got the the, my all my all my shows that i'm doing in austin and elsewhere um are going to be on my website tyler is gross as well as i post about it on instagram um all the specifics are on the website so check that out um listen enjoy this podcast it's my it's one of my good friends jared mccorkle and he's 
forever interesting and forever funny and enjoy it's happening already we're cool we're here um okay my good friend jared mccorkle's here um Mm -hmm. he has a beard and headphones on um he's having a good day tell me about your day it's been okay uh it just got better because hey. I've been on this show more than any other guest. Fuck you, Hunter. That is, well, fuck you, everybody. They've all <laughs> been on one. Yeah, but I feel like he's the only one that might care a little. So Yeah, no one else would care. They, they're not competitive. No. You know. I think once he came on, he was like, wait, no, I'm, one was enough. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's from. Wait, that's I don't want to. Yeah. We've explored all there is to explore. It's good to, it's good to see. You. I feel like the last few times we've talked, I've been doing other stuff and I haven't been a good um, conversation partner. That's okay. We talk a lot. So Today when we talked, I felt like we were going back and forth pretty well. But other times I feel like I was always in the middle of doing something. I'm usually washing the dishes or whatever. So I, so. I, I apologize. That's okay. Thanks. Cool. Well, how was your day? So I just worked tried to look over the the past podcast, you know, just normal shit. I'm at my friend's house in College Station. Okay. Well, let me ask you this cuz I know that we the podcast is about self-improvement. It is. And working on yourself. Mm-hmm. And there's a meta aspect because you have been working on improving the podcast I have as the been. podcast is gone. Yeah. So, let this be a time capsule for the future. Where are you at? now with that in your journey in your podcasting improvement journey what a great question jared i don't know i don't know because there's a lot of different colors to paint with there's a lot Mm -hmm. of different tones and now and and every and not everyone has every color so i don't know what i can expect from what person until i'm in it and when i'm in it there's too many hats for me to wear right that's the challenge i'm well but also even more than just like I'm trying to be interviewer slash funny man slash mm-hmm. scene serious partner, interlocutor plus like insightful but also I'm trying to be the producer in the yeah. moment with the audio and the video I'm trying to um, you know like get them water if they need water make sure the AC is good make sure I didn't forget to turn down the AC like there's a lot of like little things that are little bugs that i'm slapping and not getting fully invested in the um in the it's like it's like stand up in certain ways which is like the it takes a lot to get good at i think but the gate to entry the bar to entry is so low so anybody can start it that's why there's so many out there and it's also why there's so many bad ones yeah yeah i could see that i could see that but so that's where I'm at. And I'm also like, you know, I've, I've been doing some different things. Some of them, I was like, let me be I more of an inter- my chair. I'm sorry. Hey, last time that chair squeaked like a motherfucker. Oh, that's why I, that's what I'm doing. That's why I'm getting out of this. Okay, good. Chair. I hated that when you were like, <laughs> the problem with this nation, <laughs> whenever the politics, <laughs> the socialist policies are, <laughs> and I was like, Jesus Christ. Yeah. I just, uh, so like tuned it out that I kind of forgot it was happening at all, but I noticed this time. So nice. Um, mm-hmm. but, uh, also, um, I've tried some different things with these last episodes. I'm like, let me be more interviewee this time. Let me be more silly next time. And when I'm silly, I miss the interview parts. And when I'm interviewing, I miss the silly parts. I don't know mm-hmm. what to do. I think I'm just ultimately, I, whenever I come and talk to you, we always uh, really very critic, like the, as critically as Jared breaks down politics, he will crush my, my podcast episodes and mm-hmm. really, really break them down. And I feel I, like you should pay me by the way. Not what? much, but as you, go along i feel i feel like i should get some like managerial percentage or something like i feel like we i spend a lot of time like not helping you necessarily but like talking about your shit and it's because i really like it i like to do it but i think i would like compensation as well how much do you want um give me three percent you want to like a three percent of the money that i make on the podcast no, 3% of the money that you make total. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like three is a non-greedy percentage. You're more likely to give me that. So I think, yeah, let's do that. Let's do, you I know bet. what? Let's, 
We'll do two. We'll do two. That's nothing. I feel like that's still too much money. I, I, okay. I could give you, I can give you, um, a two dollars a week. No, how about you give me zero percent? You just mention me every once in a while, uh, like you have been doing. So that's that's fine. I think two dollars a week is is would be leg- my legitimate offer. I'd be like, that's adequate. I'll take the I'll amount I now. make on this. Two dollars a week, I think, is is probably way too much, but it's adequate. Right, right. Yeah, I'll do it. Let's do that. Okay, cool. Um, but yeah, I don't know. What do you think of the podcast? Because you're a fan and you're the behind the scenes consultant. I like it. It's really, I mean, it's, feeling? it's interesting because it's hard for me to be objective because you're one of my best friends. And so we talk all the time and there's a reason I want to talk to you all the time because I've got friends that I don't necessarily talk to like twice a week or whatever. So yeah. part of me is just like, it is a lot, but it's I, was, part of, I was telling Hank, and, oh, sorry to interrupt. No, go ahead. Go ahead. But I'm going to, I remember I was, ta- I was telling my, my, my friends here um, about you. And I was like, you know, our, our friendship really popped off once I left the country. Right. And then we talked a whole bunch on the phone. And then basically I came back, saw you for the first time in like two years after COVID. Mm-hmm. And then you left to Georgia. And then, so we've seen each other for like a week over the last four <laughs> yeah. years, but yeah, our relationship true. has only gotten stronger. As you get, as you become an adult, especially I feel like a lot of your long going friendships are more like just conversations anyway, just long standing conversations. Even if we, I mean, even if we lived in the same place, assuming I wasn't doing comedy, you know, it's like, you're not really going to see each other that much. You maybe have like coffee once a week or whatever, something like that at, at most. Um, it's so, yeah, as, you know, I, I, think, I can invite you over for a drink. I could get dinner. We could right. we could double, we could double. But I'm just saying like when you're pursuing comedy or anything like that, like you're going to be real, real busy. And, and a lot of the friends that we make along the way, it's just cause they're there with us doing what we're doing. Right. Like we're at like mics or at shows or whatever. So, um, was that the point you were going to make? Oh, I guess the whole, the whole reason I brought this up is that like, I, I, when I, I think it's hard for me to objective about the podcast, just because like, I like hearing you talk. I like hearing your take on things. I think you're a really good conversationalist. And I, I've been telling you, like, I, I think you're really good at that job. Generally, the question is just like, how, what specific direction do you want the podcast to go into or whatever? I want it to go in every direction. Yeah. That's always hard. I want man. it to be an exploding star. Mm-hmm. I want everyone to feel it for miles around mm-hmm. <laughs> for light years away. I want, I want, I want beings from light years away to see a flash in the sky. And that was, and that was episode 21, Jared McCorkle. <laughs> <laughs> right. I was going to say, this is like starting to get borderline scary. Like I, I wanted to, like, you're just having like a manic episode or something like that. Uh, I wanted to reach people. I want to be, I want to be like, you know, like their friend, I want to be their God. That's what I want. Like, you know, through the podcast and yeah, why not? Um, I was been, thinking, I, I was thinking this in the shower today. I don't know why I wanted to ask it. I think because we talked earlier today for mm-hmm. like an hour, and then we're right. like, let's let's talk again. Um, but I was thinking, would you rather s- jump a thousand years in the f- a thousand years in the future and be like the poorest person, or would you rather jump a thousand years in the past and be like the richest, most powerful? So that's actually really hard. Uh, I'd rather kill myself. I think they mm-hmm. both sound awful. <laughs> like, uh, but, the, but, but that, what I'm thinking is thousand thousand years in the future, the poorest person is still like a living a hundred times better than the richest person today. Yeah. I mean, that's, I guess that, I don't know. This is the, this is the parameters I'm giving you. Right. So, so assuming we keep like progressing in terms of like yeah. quality of life and we don't wipe ourselves out or kill the right. biosphere, all that all awful right. shit. Oh my gosh, you're making this too real. Can you answer <laughs> the fucking question? Whenever we're space, how, do, how does one answer this question without trying to be real about it? Like, how does like? Well, because that's not. But the point, the point, the reason I ask is because a thousand years in the future, you're the poorest, but that is still a hundred times better than the richest today. Mm-hmm. Or you could go back in time and be the richest a thousand years ago was living way worse than we are. Okay, so I'm gonna do the future just because it's like because I'd be the poorest there but it's like i'm almost the poorest now so like, <laughs> it's, it's just like an improvement yeah. but you could go back a thousand years and you could be like fucking alexander the great or some shit yeah i'm good on that shit it could be like I really well, am it could be mccorkle the mighty 
yeah, no, I'm good. I don't need this shit. I don't need to be the best anything. I don't like, and I, as much as, I mean, you know, the funny thing is it's more the time frame you gave that fucks me up on that. Cause if you said like 200 years ago and I'm the best, everything, maybe right, change, that's change a little too. bit more tempting. I need like movable type, you know, I need a printing press and all that shit. So, yeah. But, but, but the thing is 200 years, it was still like, it wasn't, it wasn't so bad 200 years ago. Right. Not for in white 18, people in 1822 you know what i mean yeah <laughs> yeah uh, i you mean look, what, I, you, can, you can pick your race past or future you can be white in the past or you can be glorby in in thousands. yeah no I, th- I feel like you can pick you know your race now that's just my feeling i feel like you can't oh, you know like, so <laughs> you're a transracialist <laughs> yeah i just i picked white i happened to just no um i don't know i i still th- i still just yeah for in the because the other thing is that like it's tempting because I want to know what's going to happen. I already know what, ha- okay, I get to be the best in the past and it's going to kind of suck and I'll get like an infection in my foreskin and I'm just like, whatever. Oh, you still got the best, whatever. But I, I can <laughs> read about that. <laughs> Whereas I don't know what's going to happen a thousand years from now. So yeah, give me that. I want to okay. know what kind of light rays are going to suck my dick or whatever. That's a, that's a good, that's a good answer. You were saying mm-hmm. something that made me think of something. And I was like, Ooh, that'd be interesting to ask him too. I don't know. I forget what. What was it? I said I was the poorest person. You're like, I'm the poorest person now. You can pick your race. I don't remember. I don't know. I don't know, I don't know where don't your heads know. went. I thought that was a fun question. Cause we were talking about uh, materialism and whatnot. Mm-hmm. I like to talk about that shit. I, I mean, I would probably go. For, I'd probably go for the future too. But um, oh yeah, I should have. Asked. Okay. But I think that's a what good a piece of shit I am. But what would you do, Tyler? <laughs> that's what I'm supposed to say in this situation. What would you do? Um, I think I would probably go a thousand years in the future. But there is a. But I think it's a good question of like you know, do you, what do you care? What do you value? Do you value power? Or do you value uh, just comfort? You know what I mean? Or like, do you value right. like, progress? Okay. Well, what's funny is like. Uh, I, I, you know, I don't know how douchey this is going to sound. I don't, the power thing doesn't get me off at all. Like it's not even tempting now. You don't think if you were the, the dictator of America, you would feel some kind of way. I mean, I guess if the quote, I don't know, that's actually that in and of itself is a better question for me. You're like, would I rather be now or literally the dictator of the country. I don't know. I mean, it fucking bums me out. How, like, not like I've trained people. I've been people's boss before and I've always fucking hated it. You know, I mean, yeah. I just don't like the idea of telling people what to do. Yeah. I don't really, what about sexually? Are you, are you, are you, a, are, you a pow, are you a power bottom? No. And it's funny thing. I didn't even know what you're going to say, but like, I can just say no, no matter what you, <laughs> what about sexually? Are you? No, probably not. No. <laughs> if it's you know specific, I mean? like, no. Does, does power play come into your sex? Cause I, cause okay. So I did, I did a sex study the other day, right? Me and my girl, mm-hmm. and we, we, we got heart monitors and we wore monitors strapped to our chest and we did and we were, uh, and they put us in a room with a white sheet and were you no. just like abducted by aliens? <laughs> yeah. No, I'm just kidding. We, we, we did do the sex study, but it was at our house. So we, no, okay. one was, no one was watching us. It was more about measuring heart rates. And we were like, it was like, look at each other in the eyes for five minutes, then hold hands for five minutes, then uh, cuddle for five minutes. And then and do, do foreplay for five minutes, then do intercourse in a specific position for five minutes, then do intercourse freestyle for five minutes. And you have to do this. Like they paid us. Okay. Like Wait, minutes. are you serious? Yes, I'm serious. Oh shit! I thought. Look, I, in my head, I thought this was like a survey that you took, or like no, this is sex. You know, like a, it's a it's a study. They they we had to have sex in certain positions, and for certain durations of time, measure our heart rate and send in that data. And is it like a legitimate university? Are you sure? Yeah, is, so it, is somebody UT. just like, no, y'all fuck like this. No, it's UT. Get back to me. UT was the homeless guy who asked us to do this. <laughs> <laughs> his name's UT. <laughs> yeah, he's great. UT and his friend, I, they're great. <laughs> and okay. um, so, we, so we did this, right? And, um, and uh, what was my point about this? It was, it, we had to do a survey, a pre-sex and a post-sex survey, right? And a lot of it was just questions about like, uh, how do you feel about your partner? Do you feel pleasant about them on a scale from one to seven? Which really ruins a sexual experience. Cause like, no you know, shit. Not, not every sexual experience is uh, the same. 
Some of them are better than others. But whenever you have to then rank how you feel about your partner afterwards, you're like, it puts you in the wrong. You're supposed to be like, oh man, what a great person. You're not mm. supposed to be like, I'm going to give it a six out of seven. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's, it's yeah, that is weird to give it a weird. numerical value. I bet also hers thing was her like post-sex like survey was just complicated, a lot of emotions and stuff. And yours was just like, I'm sleepy. I just want to, it's sleepy. That's it. I feel like I got a fart. It just said, it just, the first question is pussy. And it's like, <laughs> and the, it's, you, you can just say yes yeah, or mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I don't so, like, I don't know. I mean, so we just, so, oh, part of the, oh, sorry, go ahead. Part of the questions, remember your thing. Part of the questions were, how do you, f why do you have sex? Like what feelings do you feel? And the, some of it was like, can, what, like re reasons do you have sex? And it was like, do you have sex for connection or love or power or cause you get off seeing them submit to you? And I was like, Jesus Christ. Ugh. Like, and, and then you think about it, it's like, yeah, some people are like, I like sex because I like her to sit there and take it. And that's part of it. And the opposite, it was like, I like to be dominant dominated right have to surrender to somebody and um yeah i don't know is that a part of your psyche not really no i mean like and i i think it's not it doesn't it doesn't say much about me that like i my half of me wants to be like yeah i'm kind of submissive but i think sometimes i just don't want to be on top and that's, that's, it's more about like being lazy. You're a, a pillow princess is what we're saying. <laughs> like I'm a pillow something like I like, do, <laughs> like, I don't know. Sometimes you're just like, okay, we're going to do this. Like I want things done to me. I don't, but just out of like, I don't want to put in the effort and I, I, I'm not proud of that, but that probably has more to do with it than the psychology of like, I want to master this person. I want them to dominate me. I don't know. Right. Like, it doesn't even really register to me as a sexual thought, but I, I understand that it is for other people. Some other yeah. people at least. I, yeah, I, I've, I've found, I think in, other, in past relationships, I've, I've been, I mean, I'm a, I'm a man and a woman. So like you're the man is kind of naturally the aggressor. Like, you know, I'm going to get on top and thrust. Right. 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 In this current relationship, it's more like, Oh no, she's, she's very active and I can sit back a lot. And you know what? I think I prefer this. Cause the, like, yeah, yeah. being on top is like stressful. It's not even laziness. I'm like, it's stressful being like, I better fuck her good. But if I'm like, she's yeah. fucking me. I'm like, well, this is, this is just easy peasy. I'm just, I can't do anything wrong. I can't fuck this I mean, up at all. That's <laughs> what I'm saying. I can't do anything wrong if she's doing it. Just grab. She, she grab can't be right. She can't be riding me like, oh, your stroke is off. It's like, no, bitch, that's you. <laughs> yeah, that's you. Literally, yeah. Like yeah. No, that's funny. Yeah. Um, I used to worry about that a lot when I was. A, I was gonna say when I was a kid. That's gross. When I was younger, I used to worry a lot about like performance and like, are you doing it well? And I think at some point you're just you break and you're like, I'm gonna do it how I'm gonna do it, and we, Dude, can, you know, whatever. You know, I, I've I'm recent. I'm getting to that for the first time. I'm right. realizing so much of my sexual past has been me trying to fucking crush it to right. the point where not that I'm not enjoying sex, but there is a thing of like, it's, 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 I'm not in it for me. I'm in it for like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, I think that sometimes it's hard to tell the difference between like, you're trying to like, you know, it's almost out of empathy, you know, sexual, or otherwise where it's like, I want my partner to have a good experience. I'm doing it, you know, for them, but like, versus like, I'm trying to excel and be good at this or whatever. Like, you know, it's like uh, when I was younger, I would notice like a lot of straight dudes would talk about like, Oh, I give like my partner 19 orgasms before I even nut or whatever. And then you realize like, it's not because they gave a shit about her pleasures. Yeah. Like they were using the, her coming as like a like yeah. score system or some shit. I like mean, I still do. I mean, right. I, I, actually, I actually, no, I don't. I, I it's, it's gotten more like I'll, I'll take care of her after, but it, it, it's, <laughs> it's become sort of um, like the, the point of me in a, in, in a hookup situation, a random mm. person being like, I'm going to make her come first is so that she's not like mad at me, you know, like that, that she's not like, yeah, it was cool, but I didn't come this motherfucker. Like, I didn't want that to be, it was, it, you know what I mean? Like yeah. now that I'm in like a solid relationship where there's like love and like real trust and connection and shit, I'm just like, oh man, I get to fuck 
and have it feel good on my pee pee. Yeah. And, and then I can like look at her and be like, man, I love her too. Yeah, like it's yeah, a man. whole other thing that I'm just now coming to. And I'm like, man, I've been fucking wrong this whole time. I've been like, you know, try, it, it's been more about, it's been more about me and my need for something validation or pleasing being a people pleaser than just, it is your excellence you want to be good at fucking because yeah, you're I told mean, you should be good at fucking i mean yeah exactly and it turns out you shouldn't well there's a couple things be there too, I, I think it's funny how like there there's so much like uh talk about like don't be ableist or whatever but you know, and don't like body shame or whatever. But when it comes to sexual stuff, even the wokest people will be like, he's got big dick energy. That guy likes guns. I bet he's got a small dick, his little ass dick. It's <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. It's funny. I, I, I think that's going to be the last thing to go like that. Like you're still going to have adolescent, you know, guys growing up regardless about the territory, feeling ashamed about not being good at fucking in, in whatever capacity. I don't, I don't think it's ever going to go away. Mm -mm. It's, it's basic. It's that's like saying like, you know, I think it, there's some basic shit where it's like, can your girl fuck you good? Can mm -hmm. she cook good? These are just human when, things. You know? Is she pretty? When my, clean? The, Does she know her play? Okay, maybe not. <laughs> you know, right, it's go never going to go away. Uh, my, well, but you know what like, I mean? Like, there's just some shit that like, yeah. it's a plus if she can cook. It's a plus if she can fuck good. It's a plus right. if he is strong and can pick you up and you feel dainty. Like, girls like that shit. Right. You know, away from just sexual performance, I guess. No, no, no girls like, I like feeling like a gorilla in the bed. Like, no <laughs> well, no. Like, by the law of averages, of course, there are women who love that. You know, of course there are. Like, that's got to be a thing. Um, but I was going to say, like, the thought, I don't know if this helps anybody, but the thought that took the pressure off me in getting in, in sexual help performance, me. I help think. Me. Help me. Because it's a relationship thing for sure. That makes, I like relationship sex better. I like being in a relationship better. I'm more of a monogamous person. But even when I was single, when I realized it was like, I'm not getting laid based on recommendations. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's not like anybody, the, it, it, you mo unless it's very bad, or you're like really incestuous in your sexual friend group or whatever. Right. Most of the experiences are isolated to the person that you've slept with. I'm not saying they never, it never gets around, but like, I don't know. You gotta, gotta, gotta be real, real bad before like that's spreading into the larger community. Right, and right, especially right. if you're gay and you're doing like stuff on Tinder, you know what I mean? Like that shit is, you know, kind of a, <laughs> he can't suck dick. It's just not you know, like a thing that gets out. It's, 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 you say, I'm not going to fuck my recommendation. And I hear that. And I'm just like, you know, I didn't think I would ever fuck by recommendation, but there is like, there is a thing of, there is a part of me that's like, you kind of thought you would though. You kind of thought Maybe. that she would say something and it would fuck your shit up. You know what I mean? Like that's, we exist in a very different world in that case, because I like, I, again, I'm, I've never thought it was so good in bed that the person would go around telling people how good it was. Like I maybe, mean, maybe I, I should mean, subconscious. I think it's less about like, you don't want people to know you can't fuck. So you better learn to fuck good. Right, 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 right. Yeah. But really, you know, it's, um, here's a relationship question. I, this is what I've been struggling with. Okay. So, Self-improvement. You help me. Mm -hmm. Is that, um, I feel a lot of guilt in, relationships when i am not at my best <laughs> but this goes back to the performing thing of like right. i'm like tired and i want to relax i'm always like let me go be alone and relax and mm -hmm. i'm like well wait why can't i go be with my girl and relax it's like because i gotta be on and yeah and i mean relationship on like i'm, I'm not necessarily like doing jokes and bits and singing songs but i'm like oh i need to be a good listener Mm -hmm. And I need to respond kindly and I need to, you know, ask about her day and then she talk and then talk about my day and have interesting conversation, you know, it's right. But, and then when, whenever I'm tired, I'm like, I don't want to hear about that shit. And I don't want to talk about that shit. I just want to lay here. And I haven't, I, I, I feel a guilt with that, which I feel like I shouldn't feel help me not feel that way. I can't. No, no. I like, I mean, it's hard. I was going to say one, like dating in your teens 
is really, really hard. That's really, because, su- that's really sweet. You think I'm in my teens. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm getting to that, but like dating in your teens is really hard in some sense. It's just chaotic because like not both of the people are growing so fast and barely understand themselves and the other people and a relationship dynamic. Then it gets better the older you get. And I think like a lot of illusions get shattered along the way. So I was gonna say like, it's good to know about yourself and, and, and that your partner understands, like, I'm not always going to want to be around you. And that doesn't necessarily reflect yeah. how I, how the strength of our relationship or something like that. Cause I was gonna say, not just dating, but like when you cohabitate and you're married or anything like that, like you also have to figure out like, you know, I mean, you're going to have to find your space. And then I was going to say, the other reason that is hard for me to think about this is that I'm an extrovert. And, um, so I don't need as much alone time, uh, around or sorry, alone time generally speaking. So I kind of like having somebody there all the time. Right. And I guess there is pressure to like always be on, but overall I sort of like, I feel like, so if, if my, for whatever reason, my boyfriend lives next door, you know what I mean? Then right. I just had the opposite. The, yeah, I could just be by myself sometimes. I'm like, I would probably end up over there all the time. Right. Anyway, you know, I think, I think I'm the same way, but there's still like, like I'd prefer to hang out, mm-hmm. but when I do and I'm tired and I'm not at my best, I'm kind of like, I don't know. It's a weird, I'm, I'm trying to figure it out right now. It's a weird thing. What I'm, is Okay. So if my question would be like, um, is it just a background radiation of like, yeah, like almost on we or something like that? Or, yeah. or you, do you have specific feelings yeah. of like, I'm gonna have to be entertaining or I'm gonna have to be sexy or I'm gonna have to be talking the whole time? Do, no, there's you know, just, there's just sort of a, a, a tired, um, you know, exhaustion that it's like, it's like, Hey, you want to talk? Yeah, I guess we could talk. You want to have sex? Yeah, we could have sex. And it's all good. It's mm-hmm. not bad, but it's more of the ennui, the background. Right. Yeah. And maybe you just can't get rid of yeah. it. Maybe that's just tired. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe you're tired, but I mean, I also like, I, I also feel like I'm not a particularly irritable person either. You know, in other words, even when I'm tired, I still prefer company and I still like I get a lot out of it or whatever. Yeah. I don't so, know. I'm trying, I'm trying to get I feel like there. I've been very honest. <laughs> no, you haven't. You haven't. I'm, I'm going to get to the bottom of it. But that's where I've been at recently. Nice. How's your relationship? Are y'all, uh, you yeah, things are really good. Like, uh, who's a, who's a, be- who's a better kisser? How, how do you know? Like, it's like when you touch your two hands with each other, like you can, you which know, hand like, feels better. It's like, yeah, what? you can't like, exactly. Um, Who's, I like kissing him. I'll, who, I'll say that. Who would win in a fight? Me. Who would win in a fuck? Oh, I feel like him every time. You know? <laughs> and the winner. Who would win in a fuck? It's that I would win in a fight that I would lose in a fuck. That's, it always works that way. Yeah. Um, well, yeah. Um, we came here to talk about something specific. And we came yes. to talk about, uh, of course, it has to be political. Um, so it's always good. It's good that we got the sex out of the way, but, yeah. uh, uh, politically, uh, we're talking about the, uh, the, 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 what's it called? You talk more. Well, I can, I can get into it from the personal to the, I found out today, uh, as a matter of a certainty that my loans will not be forgiven. Um, I mean, you know, so Biden's doing the, his administration's doing the big, uh, student debt loan forgiveness thing. And um, I'm not included in that shit because I have Perkins loans, which means that like I borrowed money from my school. It sounds like a disease. I've got, it does, I've got it Perkins does. loans. I've got oh per- Perkins loans disease. Uh, so I got oh money from my school and at, well, you, you borrow that money and then your school borrows ha- or matches it or whatever. So okay. I thought maybe half of it would be getting forgiven by the federal government since they paid for half. But at some point, I guess it all went to my school. And there's a few other situations like that where people aren't going to be getting their debt forgiven. Um, there are a few, few other kinds of loans that, that are whatever. So that sucks you for know, me. Yeah. And you know, don't, don't be jealous. You're being, well, you tell yeah. you're being jealous and you're being like, Oh my God, this sucks. I am jealous. Uh, uh, but, very conservative and like bootstraps just because you yeah, don't have your shit paid for. Well, but, but here, that's the point. I'm glad you mentioned that is that like, uh, I can't imagine being against this loan forgiveness. I, I really cannot. 
I can imagine criticizing it. I can imagine saying other things about it, but like the people that really boggle my mind and hurt my heart <laughs> are, are people who are, you know, working class or middle class or, you know, in that larger, like huge first standard deviation of, of the American people or even second standard deviation who are any of them saying this is, it's bad that those loans are forgiven. And again, I, I kind of wanted to begin that way just to say like, I'm not being helped by this. Yeah. You know? I think that there's something about conservatives and I'm not saying all only conservatives are against this, but I'm surely most of them are. Mm -hmm or the, mostly the people against that are conservative, there's something dorky about conservatives that they don't, they don't get enough shit for. Like mm -hmm. they're like, the government's like, Hey, we're going to give everybody free money. And they're like, free money. Why don't you work for it? It's like, what kind of loser are you that <laughs> right. you're like, you know, it's like, Oh, no, the, right. the, the cop, like the, the cops, are on the news because they did something bad it's like yeah but the police are just trying to help us it's like what what fucking nerd is right, like there's oh, a, i love a, the, i love authority i love the police oh everyone should work everyone should work hard like you know what i mean like yeah. what happened to fucking stealing a candy bar and getting on your skateboard and yeah. flipping off the cops and like you know like like what happened to cool yeah, it's profoundly unrebellious you're right and it's also it's like very narc very tattletale that shit is, I mean, there are, I mean, to be fair, like, you know, I do think I get a little shit about this. Like when you think about specific conservative commentators, like I feel like Ben Shapiro is like the platonic form of the fucking tattletale. And he yeah. gets a lot of shit for that. You're right. And I didn't want to sort of go along with what you said too, about how, like, it's not just, um, technical conservatives like like people that call themselves conservatives that are against this but i think you could say it is a conservative impulse even it doesn't matter if you think you're a liberal yeah. or democrat if you're against this is it that is a relatively conservative and reactionary kind of impulse i think yeah um you know it's but like my interest specifically is is kind of about how people are taking this in and why they think that because i think if you step back it's hard to imagine thinking that it's like, yeah, okay. Some people are going to get money that they, they ought not get, I suppose, or, or, or let's say not, I shouldn't say they ought not get it, but like people that aren't the most deserving uh, are going to get some money from this. But it's, that's such a specific issue here because in almost uh, every other context, we would be fine with that. Like, I mean, oh, go ahead. Sorry. Well, go, finish, finish that. What, what, what are the contexts that people are fine with people? Getting well, I mean, so I was, you know, people have mentioned a lot that PPP loans were forgiven, uh, you know, but, but if you broaden out from there, I mean, people get all kinds of tax incentives and breaks for if they're homeowners, if they have uh, kids and you have all kinds of like, you know, um, you know, you get money if you have like, uh, what do you call it? Like, um, capital interest and, and things like that. There's all kinds of like advantages to our system. If you already have money or you're, you know, in the upper class or above uh, upper right. middle class or below. So I don't understand why when people look at this, they're so amazed and bothered by the idea that some people are going to get, you know, help that don't, don't otherwise need it. Well, something. tell me this, what does forgiving loans means? Does it mean that they just, throw away the piece, they just shred those pieces of paper and there's that's it does it mean that the government is paying for students loans to the people who they owe money to no i mean so what's confusing about some of this is that at like there's a longer story as to why the federal government owns these loans most of which most of them weren't originally uh, issued by the federal government. Most of them were originally issued by private lenders, but eventually most of that stuff worked its way to uh, the federal government, like managed by the Department of Education. And so it's money that they, it's debt, a debt that they have a right to collect. That money doesn't exist. It's, you know, in other words, like they don't, no one has to pay for this by doing this debt forgiveness. This is, this is money on the federal balance sheet that said, this is, these people all owe it to us. And they have, you know, they're just forgiving it. They're just not collecting that money. Right. Right. In so a broader sense of like, so is this sort of know. like, like you, someone gets an IOU and it's like, Ooh, I'm, I got an IOU. This is worth something. And then it's like, okay, well now we're just not going to validate that. And it's like, Hey, now we lost. It's like, you didn't lose anything. That's right. Yeah. You, you didn't I mean, lose uh, money. You just don't know the IOU doesn't work anymore. Yeah. And, and in a, in a sort of a kind of oblique sense, the idea is that this is part of what the current federal budget 
would have accounted for it. So in other words, like some of, you know, the federal budget for, let's say the year, I mean, just to make it simpler, um, there was an expectation that would be revenue that was going to come into the federal government that won't be coming in now. Right. Um, but I, I, but I hardly think that matters. Like, I don't like, so and, and, I, like, a, I mean, I, I hardly think it matters to the people who are actually complaining about it because a good example is for, especially the conservatives who are complaining about this. If all of, all of a sudden they announce some fucking tax cut money that was going to come into the federal government now, you know, by, I don't know, like 3% or something like that on your income or something like that, or like some big drop in the marginal tax rate or something like that these people wouldn't be complaining about that. And that's the irony is that, you know, this idea of people, and I think a lot of it's manufactured, but people who are complaining about like, well, I already paid my, my loans off. So how is this fair to other people? You know, or, or how, sorry, how is it fair to me that you're going to forgive this debt? I had to pay my debt off. You can play the exact same sort of in principle scenario with taxation. So if somebody was like, you're going to give these people a tax cut. I, my business succeeded with the normal tax rate. You're going to lower it. How is it fair to me that I had to compete when, you know, when we all had to pay, I don't know, right. 40% federal or corporate tax. It's nowhere near that, but whatever. Now, yeah. And now, 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 now people are, are having to pay less taxes. So they get an advantage that I didn't right. have when I was building my business. Right. It's, it's right, right. more shit, but, but, the, so, but oh, go ahead. Sorry. So what are the things that people are saying? Cause you were saying that you wanted to, before the podcast, you were talking about how you wanted to kind of compare your take with, with what people are saying. So, I mean, people yeah. are generally for or against it or, or whatever. The people well, that are I mean, people that are for it, I imagine, are just like, yeah, like the fucking uh, whole college system is corrupt. It used to be three percent of your income goes to college. Now, like twenty percent of it goes to college. Or right. I don't know. I don't know. I these are stats I remembered from a YouTube video earlier. Um, like the the amount you pay for college is just skyrocketed. Right. People can't afford it. Colleges have just become businesses that are catering to upper middle class people. That's why it's full of fucking hula hoops and, and lazy rivers and no one's actually learning anything. <laughs> I mean, that's all kind of true. I mean, like, so, I mean, to give a sense of some of that, like the little piece of data that I heard that I thought was very telling is that the Pell Grant, like, I don't know, let's say, I can't remember the exact years, but 30 years ago used to pay 80% of tuition for most schools, probably especially for state schools. Now it pays like less than 30%. So it's a pretty big right. sort of difference. Like, so to back up, I don't think most people are complaining about um, an attempt to fix this system in some way, almost across the board, everybody, I mean, even fucking Marco well, Yeah, Rubio. but I, I guess my point was just right. the system's fucked up. A right. lot of people are getting debt and the, and the the degrees aren't helping as much as they used to. Right. So let's at least give them a little bit of money to help them, help them through these tough times. And then there's, you know, there's winners and losers. The people who get it win, the people who don't get it lose. And the people who aren't in school yet, who won't get this are losers as well. But like, who, who cares? Well, we can do it again right. if we really need to or blah, blah, blah. And of course, people who are against it are probably just like, it's not fair. It's a waste of money. They, they decided to get these loans. They should pay them. Um, you know, just that cl classic fucking narc lame ass fucking yeah. dweeb shit. These well, are, there's a lot. I mean, the Republican, Republican party is a party full of kids that asked that say, didn't you assign us homework? That's the Republican party. They're yeah. Lame. I mean, so there's a bunch of nerds. There's a That's lot to one of the jokes that you always forget to laugh at, Jared. I mean, oh, <laughs> you do I know that. it wasn't like a killer, so but you know, you could that is so true. smile. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, what am I, am I laughing at the joke or, or what you just said? It's hard to say. Uh, but well, I was gonna say, so you, to me, you want to disambig and disambiguate some of the stuff you want to bracket it out. One is there's just a lot of bad faith, um, from the conservatives. Yeah. Right. Like, so there's a lot of people complaining about this and then they're talking about fairness, but they did not really give a shit about any of that. It's just the, the idea that this is debt forgiveness, I would say for anybody, but especially for working people. And the reason I mentioned that is that like, um, again, there are the, the idea of taxation dividing it between like, Oh, people are paying taxes and they're not being helped by it. Um, you know, I, we give tax breaks, um, or, and, uh, what do you call it? Like for, um, homeowners, I'm not a homeowner. My taxes, for instance, go towards the public education system. I don't have kids. Um, the point is like, we don't give a fuck about that. Like that. Nobody cares I don't like, about I don't things. like war. I don't like national or exactly. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. it should all be golf courses or burnt down for exactly. 
Um, I mean, so, so at some level, it's like, I don't take any of the conservatives seriously. I mean, you know, when I say that, I mean like Republicans, I don't take them seriously, but there are plenty of sort of like corporate and centrist Democrats and like people somewhere vaguely in the middle who I think are very confused about this, that are mentioning this issue of like sort of fairness and, and things like that. So a couple of things that just have to be said, like right up top is that this is not what anybody who is a, a progressive or who wants this, um, you know, to fix the debt crisis or to help working people. This isn't a piece of legislation that we were trying to get passed. This is the fact that you have an, ex uh, uh, Biden can do this by, uh, he has the authority to do it. He can bypass Congress. He can forgive student loan debt. He can't right. do that with a number of other things. The reason he can do it is because the federal government is the holder of like over 90% of this debt. So in other words, like all these fucking complaints about like, oh, this is going to this isn't going to target specifically the poorest people or the people who who have the most, let's say, illegitimate or inhumane debt. It's like, yeah, we don't get to choose that. We get to choose this one thing. We either do it or we don't now, which is to say Biden either does it or he doesn't. And I was going to say earlier, you asked, like, what is the general like um, what are the responses here? And I guess, I mean, they have to come into like three categories, people who are against it, people who are for it on the basis that they think it's pretty right on. And then there are people who are, who think it's not nearly far enough. And in some sense, this is, could even be a bad thing in some vague sense, because it, it'll, they can say, Oh, we did something about this. And it, you know, I, I think the quote that was going around is like a bucket of ice water on a forest fire. Right. Um, but it's silly. And I think it's, it's silly in terms of how people understand the issue. It, the rhetoric is very confused. So the idea is that, Everybody who is who has federal student loan debt will have ten percent, or sorry, ten percent. They will have ten thousand dollars forgiven, assuming that their income isn't over one hundred and twenty thousand dollars a year. So keep that. Are you sure that's not why you're not getting your debt relief? Yeah, I. Yeah, you think? Yeah, yeah. I mean, look at look at this apartment. Um, obviously, okay. So one hundred and twenty. A lot of it's a lot of Captain America statues. I'll tell you that's, that. Yeah, there's actually there's oh there's one. Okay, thank you. I was gonna be like this now. Okay, there's one. Okay, but one hundred twenty thousand dollars ceiling annually, and then if you qualified for a Pell Grant, usually you have to be at the the sort of really lower income echelon, it's $20,000 forgiveness, right? So, um, so there's all the people who, I, of people who graduated college, I think the, the median income is somewhere in like the $60,000 sort of thing. That's people yeah. that graduated though. There's a bunch of people who have loans that didn't graduate. Like if you don't finish. Brutal. Yeah, you still have all those loans or whatever. And so, but, but anyway, so let's say under 60 or 50,000. What was I supposed to do? How was I supposed to graduate? They put in a lazy river, man. What do you want me to do? I'm like, of course <laughs> yeah. I won't be in a lazy river. Why would I be studying? That makes you get high. Like you're not going to be able to. Yeah. So, so, but uh, so I called the study river, the right, lazy right. river. So under that median, like, let's say like in the 50,000 range or whatever, you know, you're, you're probably talking about people that everyone in this conversation would agree are working class. They probably can't pay back those debts, especially uh, sufficiently monthly to get ahead of the interest. So they're not actually that the, the expense isn't inc literally increasing as they're paying. Right. But the thing is, is that everybody above that below the 120,000 a year is what usually we would refer to as the middle class. And it's so insane to hear like both parties who would like people from both parties who would normally say anything we could do to help the middle class. This is clear that that group of people, the very people they're saying, oh, they're they don't deserve to be helped. Why should we bail them out? That you could you could if you right now for no other reason said, hey, we're doing a middle class tax break. Uh, it, I mean, the fucking Clinton did this and literally if he was just like, we're doing a tax decrease and, and, and you're going to save more than $10,000, more than 10,000 on tax deduction by just calling it a middle class tax deduction, you, the, you would get almost unanimous support. So the very group of people that they're bitching about who are going to get, you know, their, their debts forgiven, who are doing relatively well are firmly middle class. The thing that, to keep in mind too is that rich people don't fucking take out college loans. So the truly affluent, the really, really rich people out there, if they have the money, if they have the, the liquidity, yeah, they, just, they just pay it. They just drop. Cause why the fuck would you want to pay 8% yeah. interest? Yeah. And literally guess, at the end, I guess, that's a, good, I guess that's a good point. Student loans are literally people who are not rich. 
by definition. Yeah. People that are not if rich. You have there money. People, if you have yeah. money, then it's just like, you know, hey, m- mom, uh, tuition's $5,000 this year. I'm like, okay, here you right. go. And that's it. Like that. There's no more talk or discussion. It's, it's done. Yes. It's ridiculous. And then, you know, good for you if you were able to do that. Like that's the point, but, but either way they exactly, but the, but those people are not being even considered for this. So that, you know, right. I mean? it's none of that money is going. And the idea, I saw a statistic that said like, uh, you, <laughs> this is ridiculous. It said like, uh, $2,000 is how they calculated how much every person is going to have to pay. Like that's the, the, you know, like, what do you mean? Like, in other words, um, it's, it's so goofy. It's kind of hard for me to form as a sentence. Like, um, the cost of this to every citizen will be $2,000. This was in like the fucking New York times, um, which is insane because that's not how the tax structure works. Right. Like they don't just like, Oh, is, here's an expense. We just divide it evenly among the population. And that's right, funny. Right. Isn't this fucked up? Yeah. They would be fucked up to do it that way. Luckily that's a complete fantasy. Yeah. You know, um, it would be like if we said like the stimulus that like, we're going to give everybody $2,000. So that means it's going to cost everybody $2,000. Right. Now I guess that, that is a dumb thing to do, huh? Okay. Um, wait, so let, let's back up though. So, right. or not back up. Let's f- see where we are. I feel right. like we're, 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 we're talking in a logical line, but in a narrative, uh, there's a lot to put on the table, but yeah, yeah. Yeah. I feel like narratively, I don't, I, I don't know where we are. Right. So where, so where are we? I was asking you who is saying what there are people who, I don't even know where, I don't even know where, where we well, are. Look, I mean, so, so you, cause you were, you were saying, cause I, I was saying I had a, I don't want to say relatively novel take. I don't think my take about it is that different. Yeah, there are things think- that I think are interesting to focus on here that are like kind of slipping through the larger conversation. Right. But we do have to say what generally, or, you know, is being said. For sure. So again, just to recap, just on that real quick is that you have, I think a bunch of people who are um, conservatives who are making disingenuous arguments, who are just against debt forgiveness of any stripe, no matter what sure. the situation is. Then there's people you- who are for it. And then there's people who are against it. And people like the New York times are making, well, it's yeah, with, and... with any of those publications that can be really difficult. Like there are people who are conservative ideologically and they're just going to on, you know, th- this is a, a sort of intervention that they're, they're not generally comfortable with anyway. So, but, but my point is like, you have a bunch of, I think very bad arguments that are, um, and, and by the way, I should say that I think the last time I saw the polling on this, it was like roughly speaking, speaking like 30% of people thought were at least for this, thought it was a good thing to do. And then 30% thought it, he should have done more. So in terms of like just the general polls about this, it's polling very well, but, right, uh, but yeah. there's a bunch of like, I think people online who, um, who are, I think, you know, all due respect kind of rubes, you know, you have been, have been given this information, had the debate framed for them in a certain way and are trying to be reasonable about it, but they have a relatively amorphous consumptive ideology. They sort of just, whatever the sort of CNN tells me is kind of what I think is, is the case. And the reason I think that's interesting is that there's this question about whether we should do this. That's, that's the issue, right? When, when you watch CNN, they put up this idea uh, or MSNBC or read the New York times. It really doesn't matter, but like there's this idea, should we do this debt forgiveness? And then they talk about, look, this is the unfair aspects and the, and the fair aspects, but it creates what like um, it's, it's presented to them like a live decision. Right. When you compare this to a bunch of other things where clearly nobody gave a, like there was no political sort of like, there's no, should should we have tax cuts for the rich? Right. Should exactly, we, exactly. Should we invade Iraq? Directly. You know? Should the PPP loans have been forgiven? It wasn't, those things are just talked about as if they are part of the necessary, right. you know, kind of, right. you know, background, again, it's, background radiation. So. It's sort of that. Was it Thomas Frank? That sort of Thomas Frank point about like what the, what these, you know, neoliberals do is sort of left and right. It's like, Hey, the future's coming. It's just, this is what's happening. Right. It's like, Hey, PPP loans, these are just happening. But if it's something that they don't want, it's like, well, should this, let's slow down and see if, Hey, let's as a society come together and think about, is this something good that we should do? But if it's something that they want, it's like, listen, jobs are going to China. There's nothing we can do about it. We have to get ready for the future. And that's that's, what you're, and and that's, that's that's precisely it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
and you know, I mean, a good example was, you know, people who were saying, well, we should fix the system first. I mean, you got this a lot, like, and I think that you even that, predicted was a, this was, was going to be a soccer take. point. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, exactly. I think. Soccer well, I mean, well, I, mean I, I think the main thing is like, I said that your take, I said, this is a topic I really probably don't know what your take is on. And if I had to guess, it was, they're not doing enough, which I'm sure. Yeah. That's your take. They're not doing enough. You know, right. like sh they should, they should cancel more. They should fix the system. They should Absolutely. do, they should stop all the bad things from happening. Yes. That would be a nice thing. Yeah. That would be my take. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. But, but I mean, in this case, and this is what's really sad because I think a lot of times I might have a take, but a lot of people on the left have a take where, you know, irrespective of what appears to be our pragmatic choices, we should do these fundamental radical things. And then, and I mean these things, and it's a lot of, a, a, a lot of times, like sometimes our solutions are not going to work because we fail to address really fundamental things. And so believing that it sucks to hear people on the right say that shit. And I think it's completely disingenuous. And so the reason I say that is that, like, if there was a bill and on, you know, on offer that said, look, we are going to fix the, the, you know, system of predatory debt when working people try to get out of, you know, poverty uh, by getting, you know, some accreditation. So they'll get a better job. We, you want to fix that system. I wouldn't be absolutely advocating for it, but it's not anywhere in sight. Right. What we have is the possibility to do, to do this. And that's like, I was reading posts, uh, you know, and reading. Fucking Don't tweets let and perfect like be the enemy of good. Yeah. Whoever has said that I got, I agree with everything they did politically. You know, the Whomever. First, the first person I heard say that was Obama, but there's no I way know, that's I'm joking. Uh, yeah. He didn't coin that though. Did he? No, but I mean, he certainly popularized it. Yeah. He certainly. Uh, 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 remember you can't let a uh, perfect uh, be the enemy of good. <laughs> and that's why we're I thought bailing I would... out these banks. Oh, uh, that's we're why gonna... we're we're gonna help these people by bailing out the banks. Hey, yeah. <laughs> listen, we can't let perfect uh, be the enemy of good. That's why we're gonna bomb those kids. <laughs> perfect, and uh, we're good. Hey, come on, it's pretty good. <laughs> yeah. No, that's pretty good. Don't don't think too much about it. <laughs> <laughs> He's so charming. He means so well. Um, Louis, but yeah, Louis, yeah. Louis C.K. I just like him. I just, I just yeah. like him. I just like, as he's yeah. talking, you know, as he's talking about like, you know, invading, I don't know, another sovereign nation yeah. or something like that. It's just like, he's just, he mean like, yeah. You, um, for the listener, we were talking earlier about Louis and his political opinions and how they're like, Obama felt like a great president. It's like, yeah, but he did a lot of fucked up shit too. Let's not forget yeah. that. Yeah. I mean, like just to touch on that a little bit, I think the point for me, uh, cause if anybody's listened to Louis a lot, he's doing a lot of the like, kind of like podcast circuit and stuff like that. I know lovely. Right. He's literally my Love favorite it. living comedian. Um, but when he talks about politics, he'll do this thing when he was on Shane Gillis's podcast, he was, they just go talk about the per, uh, presidents and, and, you know, they're just talking about the sort of like personalities and biographies, which is at some level fine. But um, you know, you could tell he and Shane disagree a little bit about the underlying politics. And anytime they get to that tension, he would say something like, you know, I'm not worried about, I'm just talking about their like as people, I'm not really talking about the politics. And part of me thinks like, yeah, you shouldn't do that. Like you can do it intermittently. Your perspective towards politics, you know, like ought not be about like the, the idiosyncratic personalities of the people under like, it's weird to me and not a good thing when like, when you think of a political leader, you're not immediately thinking about their effect on politics. But you're, you, you know, know, here's you're thinking about their celebrity. Here's a counter though. Okay. In the Shane Gillis podcast, Louis was going through every president and talking about them. Right. Every single president. So he wasn't going Thomas Jefferson, uh, slave owner uh fucking he ruined the, oh the, yeah no no you're you know you're what i mean right so you're there right. is like it wasn't like he was specific about obama yeah or so there anybody. is something uh, there is something about like it would be weird for him to be like but you gotta understand thomas jefferson ruined the Whig party and the Whig party had the best policies about grain at the time it's like right. it's like okay well maybe that's not a weird thing to be talking about no and, and, maybe, and maybe he was being more historical about obama and cultural impact than he was political and maybe because it's so recent that and the effects are still being felt that you feel like he should be more political but maybe yeah. there's more than one way to look at look at a politician and the time and culture that they come from 
I mean, I think that's potentially true, but I think like the analogy I told you this, that I draw is like, you could do this with serial killers. You could be like, just talk, I just want to talk about what Ted Bundy, how charming he was and how he was in conversation. And these are the weird idiosyncrasies. And somebody's like, well, yeah, but he killed like 37 dudes. It's like, I don't want to talk about that. That's not really how I feel about. But I guess killers. I don't I guess know the, about that. Stuff. I think the I just difference want to is, I think the difference is a president is president because they were liked. You know what I mean? Yes. Like the, they, yeah. their, their role, the reason they're remembered is because they're president, not because they are terrible you know what i mean right even yeah. though they no, do I, I get that i understand and i don't you know but i you know i am correct but i <laughs> um but look i mean my point is just that we're not n- no there's no option to you know to to pass that that bill like all of those conservatives wouldn't agree with like doing anything about this debt for one and the way that they want to I guess, reform the system. I mean, that's the weird thing is that like everybody sort of agrees that this is unsustainable, but our solutions for how to get out of it are not the fucking same. So, I mean, the conservatives generally, I think want to privatize these sorts of things and let the market somehow work this shit out. And I don't know. The market is how we got into this problem in the first place. Well, partly, I mean, one of the biggest problems we had, we have an almost worst of the world situation, whereas the government guarantees these loans and then um it, it you know and then the universities and and private schools and stuff like that get to set their own price and so it does because they know that they won't be on on the hook for the cost it's either a private lender or a government or something like that it's an incentive for them to increase their price that's the awful way to do it and yeah. so i think when conservatives point to the, the idea that these are government secured or guaranteed loans they are right that that's going to only going to increase the cost but their solution is just the only thing they want to do is for the government to stop doing that aspect and ostensibly for just i suppose only rich people to go to school that's the conservative plan. Yeah. In other words, like you're well, still, you're still not going to have, there's still going to be some massive section of the population. That's not going to be able to forward higher education. They're right. not going to, because there's some section of the population that does not have the kind of excess income, even if it was relatively inexpensive. And right. so that's going to have to be publicly subsidized in some way and doing it the way we're doing it now. The only reason we're doing it this way now is because it was this good way of like putting all of that onus eventually on the individual i mean and then and fucking in the 80s and 90s they would just like you're investing in your own future but it's also a great way to get give the banks you know you know billions of dollars but go ahead. yeah i mean th- th- i think that's that's what s- some of the stuff that i was s- hearing about was that pre-80s uh a lot of funding for colleges came from the government. They would give funding to the colleges and then the colleges would fucking teach people shit. They would teach right. people right, po- right politics, capitalist politics, socialist. There was like right. socialist clubs on all the campuses. People were just learning about shit and, re- mm-hmm. and, and ideas were really bouncing off of each other. Then Reagan comes in and Reagan is, you know, there's austerity and all this stuff. And it's like, yo, put give it to the market. So then the, the, the colleges stop getting that funding, but they need funding. So right. obviously they start working to get funding from who rich people, of course. So they start basically these schools that were places of, that were just being funded and then ideas and learning and stuff was being developed. Now it's like, how do we get money? We need to become a business. Let's make this a business. And then at that point, that's whenever it's like, yo, let's make the prices higher and higher. Let's, let's do, let's put some, like I was saying before, let's put some, some river walks in here and let's fucking right. get, a, get, a, get, there's the biggest fitness facility in the whole country because we are trying to attract rich uh, kids who have rich parents who can donate to the school and keep the fucking money train coming. And that, that part specifically is why people have pointed to how, why there's a lot of really like bullshit spending at these universities and, and colleges and stuff like that. The idea that like they were investing a lot of money, not in, they weren't really trying to cut a lot of cost. The ad, admin also expanded, you know, exponentially. And that's a whole other issue. But the idea of like them putting lazy rivers and massive fountains and gymnasiums and stuff that really don't connect directly to like accreditation is because they're literally trying to attract the, the children of parents who are willing to pay buku bucks to go to these schools. Right. But but so to back up, like obviously the, the real solution is to make public universities. 
um, right. that are free at the point of entry. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and, and I, that would obviously that would fix everything or, you know, make it easier. And then also by, but by making what they're, they're trying to, they were conservatives are wanting to privatize what? I mean, they want to privatize education completely. Oh, so it was just private school. So that then they can. Right. But how is, how is making sure there's no lo government loans? How is that ensuring? Because the, the whole point of the government secured loans meant that if you could pass you, the standards to get into the school, it would automatically be paid or not paid, but secured by the government. This, the, the, some private lender would give out the loan and you know, it would be guaranteed by the, the government. There, in other words, like the idea is if I have a, you know, oh, a, a is just classic privatizing something that's public so then that other people can just be a middleman and make money off it. That's well, what it kind of, like. but it, well, it seems like a kind of middle solution, right? I mean, it's a lot like how the uh, you know, Obamacare works as well, which is like the, the we we want to expand access. Um, and so, you know, but but it's still going to be serviced privately. So the, the government sort of creates a structure where they necessarily, everyone, you know, either absolutely universally has to be given some access, but it's still going to be usually like, uh, there's going to be corporate profiteering involved. Right. I mean, corporate profiteering sounds bad, but I just mean like the, the private companies are going to be the one to administer and they're going to actually, uh, I mean, obviously work for profit. Right. It, it's, it's just the government requiring the use of a private service. Right. Absolutely. Right. But, but what I was gonna say is that like, so the, the cover, the conservative solution there isn't to, it is basically to drop the premise that everyone should get to go as a matter of, you know, by virtue of being an adult citizen that you should have, or, or I mean, any citizen, but you know, right. usually with college as an adult, you know, part of the, some of the conversation that I've seen surrounding this is like people coming out conservative, like true conservatives really coming out and saying like, listen, if we give these loans to these poor, if we forgive the loans of these poor people, then that means that they can, that, that, that means that they can go to college. And if they can go to college, then there's no reason for them to go to a military. And then, so we lose right. our whole recruiting, our main recruiting tool for the military, which is, you know, keep people so destitute that they have to put their bodies in the line of fire right, so yeah. that they can afford food and college and have a future if they survive based on wars to make rich people richer. So it's yeah. this really dark thing. And then that, and then that just, but there, makes there's an irony there too, which is that like, I don't even think that's real. Like, um, you know, the, not that there's not what they call an economic draft, but like, that's a good example of just a, a kind of rhetorical misstep. In other words, like, I don't actually think that's that guy's real concern. I think that was trying to come up with a, like too clever by half argument that nobody would have saw coming for why we shouldn't do this. And it might appeal to conservatives. That's not why anybody gives a shit about this. Um, you know, well, but then why do I guess the, the thing I'm thinking is like, do conservatives just want poor people? Do they just want, is, is there gold? I mean, cause you're saying, yes. I mean, for some, you, some, you're saying the conservative who, solution is to make it so that only rich people can go to college. And if yes. college is the main benchmark that allow that proves in the meritocracy that you're smart and capable. And they're trying to, they're trying to narrow that pipeline. Right. Do they just want poor people to exploit. Is that the whole purpose of the Republican party is to ensure policy? A lot like, of them. Yeah. Like abortion, like, like let, let's ban abortion so that poor people have to have kids. We're going to have our abortions, but let's ban abortion. So the poor people can have kids. Let's fucking make sure that no one can go to college. Let's make sure that healthcare is bad so that no one can get out of poverty so that we can continue to exploit these people. Is that, do you think that's like more or less explicitly the goals? Of I think it's like explicitly the goals for some Republicans. I think that it's a mistake to look at sort of large political coalitions and think that everybody has roughly the same purpose. Usually what happens is that they have a bunch of commensurate purposes or they have like ideologies that fit well enough together, at least right. in the interim to sort of like, so people are very quick to point out, you have like, you know, neocon hawkish sort of Republicans, you have chamber of commerce, business deregulation Republicans, you have, you know, Christian conservative Republicans, you have a number of right. ones or whatever. So I was going to say, but in terms of what people know and what people intend, people that are usually showing for the chamber of commerce, which is just to say pe people who are really openly motivated by the business sectors actually do explicitly want poor people. 
and um, me because they want uh, a sort of permanent standing kind of like as the expression goes like hell it army of cheap labor to drive yeah. down the, the cost of labor what is their moral reasoning behind this well so okay so there's also people that ideologically believe in the power of the free market and i think that History has disproven that and just general rational argument. But th their idea is that like the government makes everything more inefficient and uh, and expensive. And so if the government was to get out of it, the, just the idea of competition would, you know, make things more affordable, at least sufficiently that we would have a functioning society. But we know that that's not true. So, I mean, like, right. are they but just they, they want are they just true. are they just stupid? But like, no, I, because I don't think okay, I think. But, it, Okay, well, here's what I'm thinking. So, because I've been reading, also I haven't been reading, but I've been reading uh, that <laughs> fucking. I tried. It's not even like it's bad. I'm just like, I am too tired to read. This is not the time for me to be. Reading. Okay, yeah. Um, so stop looking at me like that. Okay. Um, but I've been reading. Started from the bottom. Now we here. What is that book called? <laughs> It's called, what is that book called? Um, I don't know. Um, what stamped we're from the beginning. <laughs> right. And now, it, and I, S from the B, started from the bottom, now we're here. Mm -hmm. I'm, re I'm reading e Ibram Kendi's book, Started from the Bottom, Now We're Here. And uh, no, it's called Stamped from the Beginning. Uh, Can we just get to it? Jesus I know, I Christ. thought it was funny, and you have, re <laughs> and you have refused to crack a smile. Because I was just right on the edge of telling whether you were having a stroke or not. Like, for real, like, is, are we okay? Is everything... Started from the bottom, now we're here. And right. I'm reading this book, and it's a definitive history of uh, racist ideas in the America. And one of the things that they talk about. No, it's about, not. <laughs> no, it's not. No, that's but go the, on, go that's, the, that's the subtext. Right. Anyway, one of the things that it talked about in there was it was it was this idea about how, like, whenever they invented black and white in mm -hmm. America, the, the ideas. There used to just be people, and there was Africans, and everyone identified as a different tribe. They didn't all identify as black. There's no black right, people right. in Africa. There's just, there's there's Ugandans and Ethiopians, but they don't think of, of themselves as, they're not like, hey, but we all niggas. Like, that's not how they <laughs> So they're over there, and um, then we, you know, America and Europeans captured them to make them slaves, and we need to create the idea of white and black and that's a hard thing to create because no one actually has any identity to white and black because that's not it's not real it's just something right. that people are making up so one of the things that they did is that they really attached whiteness to the idea of christianity because christians were a thing so right. it's like christians christians are white and you're, you're white because you're christian and you're christian because you're white it's the circular logic so people still do something very similar to this when they talk about western culture and they have these vague ideas of like stuff coming out of like you know, Northwestern sort of stuff or like, I, I don't know, um, antiquity. So Rome and, and Greece and stuff like that. And it's all, it's also usually pretty made up, you know, I mean, half of those ideas came from elsewhere or whatever, but they right. have this idea of like, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. And, and then for black people, they were like, well, black, well, what makes them black? Well, they're black because they're slaves and they're slaves because they're black. There right. you go. And so and then slowly over time, black and white develop its own, um, they, people, I, people use, take those on as identities. And that's right. why even, you know, most racist organizations are Christian in some regard because whiteness and Christians are very right. together. So in this regard as well, which, and what were you talking about again? Yeah, I was like, "Where is this going? This is good." No, because uh, well, I was, I was saying, uh, do, "Do conservatives want poor people?" And you're yeah. saying they do. And you're saying, you're saying that, that they just okay. So you're, you're saying, saying that, are they well, just no, you know, you're saying not all. You're saying not all conservatives or Republicans necessarily want poor people. They have other ideologies. Right. But maybe yeah. some of these, you know, these things where it's like, well, it's like, well, we're free. Well, fr the free market wants poor and like, you know, it, what sort of circular logic are they doing to make people this identify is, this is sort of my point, which is morally like, it, with yeah. this idea that like, yo, poor people are good. Poor people are good because the market wants poor people and the market's right. So poor people like what, what, what is the, what is the, the moral, intellectual, social, emotional framework of thinking for these people who are like, yeah, more poor is good. And it's like, but that, that goes against everything we believe. Yeah, but we believe in the free market. But what about Christianity? Well, Christians right. help the poor. How do we help the poor? Well, because of the free market. Well, yeah. You know what so I mean? Like, what I was going to say, so I, I would just abandon the idea that somehow you're going to find this master narrative. That, like, there are, that, so one, that, there are people that are dumb. There's a lot of, 
Okay. Um, can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay. So what I'm saying is like, I would abandon the belief that somehow you're going to figure out some master narrative that they're all feeding into or what have you. I mean, they're broad, like, well, no, of course, I don't think that it's like, it's not like they have a meeting and they're like, all right, does everyone follow the plan? Does everyone? No, but, I know. But what I'm but saying I, is like, but I think there is, disparate. but I think there is an idea. I think, I think the idea, I think you can analyze an ideology to get some sort of understanding of like, it doesn't necessarily make logical sense, but the, it right. makes cultural and social sense. And that's why people go with it. Right. I'm, I'm not, I don't disagree with that. What I'm saying is that like, literally when you're talking about conservatives or even Republicans, you're, you can locate for actually sort of disparate, I don't know if it's for exactly, but I mean, we can go through some of them, like disparate ideologies, let's say, that don't really have, aren't thinking according to the same lines as the others, but they just have over a period of time work together and have a common cause or whatever. So I was going to say, there are one to back up. There are dumb people who I think are bad at doing general analysis and they're just wrong about this. Like they, they're, and, and to even be more explicit about that, they are really at the mercy of whatever is in their sort of algorithm or friend group or what they've been watching on television or whatever. And it's just the framework that they've kind of received. So that that's one thing. There are also people that I think are really, um, nationalistic or, you know, the opposite of that xenophobic. And this is the system that is associated with our country for a long time. There's a lot of tradition about, you know, entrepreneurial spirit and things like that. And so I think a lot of people have a big boner for the idea of the free market on the basis of like, you know, it exemplifies things like freedom and, and they want to think that they're free in that way. Um, then you have a lot of apology for privilege and wealth. So, it, you know, if you're a really, really, um, it feels weird to think that like, uh, you, all these people are suffering and you're not, and it's an arbitrary thing, you know, uh, you know, and maybe you feel really guilty and so you got to do something like that guilt or on the flip side, maybe you are prone to narcissistic self-aggrandizement. And so you can use this idea of, of, you know, Hey, we're, if, you know, your, your success in the world, it, your level of success is due to something internal, you know, or something like that. So I think there's a lot of reasons that people fall for this, this belief. Well, I don't, I, and I think here's the thing. I don't mean people. Cause I mm -hmm. understand that people, that, 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 that these both any party Democrat or Republican captures right. the my, hearts and minds of people through a ver variety of means, you know, right. you're, you vote Democrat cause you're gay. I vote cause I'm black, but right. really I hate each other. So like yeah. that's, but that's not, <laughs> that doesn't put us, that's not that we put those aside for our, com for our common interests. But like, I mean, the elites, I mean, the people who run this shit, the people who make the decisions, right there has to be some sort of moral reason like, like Obama, like if we look at Obama, like, and, and we, I only say this because I've, I read that Thomas Frank book that you gave me. There is something about like, I believe in the meritocracy because right. I benefited from the meritocracy. So it works. If you're actually good and smart, then you will become successful. I was a poor black Hawaiian boy. And now I'm president of the United States. I am proof that if you're smart and you work hard, it's possible, but right. really he was just a person who made it to the system. And there's lots of other smart, capable people that just can't for a variety of other reasons. Right. So that system that Obama cares about and wants to maintain really should be adjusted in some way. And that, but that's the core of this belief. It's like, Oh, meritocracy. At least that's what Thomas right. Frank says. So what is the Republican fucking way of thinking? And that's the reason why they're like, yeah, but some people are going to be poor because you know, they're just not as good as me. I mean, what, what yeah, I think there is that abiding belief and there's the, but then this is different saying like, no, yeah. we don't want to give them money. We don't want to give them nothing. We want them to be poor. There is that part of the Republican party, the elites, the people running the party, the think tanks, right. the, all those people, what could possibly be their moral reasoning behind wanting to keep people destitute yeah well i mean some people are operating oftentimes within institutional frameworks and some of that inst some of those institutional frameworks are literally their lobbyists for businesses so i was going to say like and and a lot of times those people end up being the kind of like um 
this is a weird word to use here, but like taste makers, like the kind of like, they're the ones that produce the sort of ideologies and they're literally sort of paid to do that. So I, I do think a lot of it is cynical. Like, in other words, this is, it, it's not in a certain like sort of strata of people's best economic interests that everybody like that we have full employment, for instance, or even better that people aren't absolutely desperate, that they're going to be dispossessed at any given moment. And they're aware of those interests and they lobby, you know, for those interests. And I don't mean just they lobby for government. I mean, they, you know, pay think tanks, they subsidize or, or, um, you know, have entire like media arms of, of the law, like Fox news and things like that. Um, part of me is like, so your question is like, it, how do they explain my, to my themselves my, that my they're question not is bad how, people? My question. Yeah. yeah. Like wh- uh, what, yeah. how could, how could people do- <laughs> now I'm just a little boy, right? How could how I could, do this? How could you do this? <laughs> Why well, would I mean, you do that? I mean, this is getting very like abstract, but I was going to say, I think also in some sense, like people aren't really, we're not really set up psychologically most of the time to, to be critical in that way. Like we're looking for the script that tells us that we're good people and that we're is doing it, our best and stuff like simply, that. Is it, is it, do Republicans want poor people to remain poor the same reason like I want Amazon just because like, no, no. Okay. Look, so I, I think, you know what I mean? It. Like it's, I think it's that's there part of it. and it works. Yeah. yeah. I think that's part of it. I also think that um, there is a kind of like ideological framework they believe in that this is kind of running counter to. So a good example is the idea that uh, look, these people made a free decision. You know, they knew what the consequences were. And so they should live with the consequences because, you know, what's the world going to be like? It was also almost like a bad Kantian argument where it's like, what would the world be like if all of a sudden we can just renegotiate contracts? But I think that's kind of the point, which is like, um, you know, private property, these sorts of things are political relationships. And I don't think they like the idea that they see where this is coming from. A lot of people, right. Which is like, this is a mass of popular people, mostly poor, because that's the other thing away from who was, helping, uh, or sorry, sorry, away from who is benefited from this, the vast majority of pressure that created this were, you know, working activist communities, or at least, you know, activist sort of communities that are, you know, kind of working for the interest of working people. And I say that because like, sometimes you have people that are in like, even union circles where they're not, they're not exactly destitute, but they, they, they represent working institutions or something like that. Right. So in other words, like, okay, so we have proper private property. We have contracts that enforce it. It's not, it's good for us, bad for them. I mean, I'm very much simplifying here. Right. Um, if they can just lobby the government to nullify those contracts, that's not good for about a billion reasons. Right. So I think that there's, there's a general feeling that this kind of activity itself, not just on the larger consequences in terms of like, how's it going to affect the, the labor market? But this activity itself goes against the, how they understand their politics being, you know, right. held together. You know what I'm happy about? I'm happy that there's, that there, you know, there's still a part of me that is innocent. I haven't, okay. I haven't gotten completely cynical where I'm like, yeah, because they want you to die. Cause they don't give a shit. I'm just like, there must be a reason mm-hmm. why they would do something so bad. Well, th- let me give you one. That's a little bit more like you can see how a person would think they were doing good. I mean, um, there's a like kind of almost like Hayek or Von Mises kind of thing where the idea it, it doesn't matter that i just i can't sit i can't not name i wasn't even I talking to you i was talking shit. to the people watching oh good 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 well, <laughs> uh, but, yeah, <laughs> i get it but um we're like so the thing about um hayek that's interesting it's like adam smith as well when they talk about market capitalism they they talk about it like on smith's end it's about like literally how to produce wealth in nations for Hayek, it gets grounded more in like individual freedom, which he thinks is by far the best human value. But in both cases, and I respect both of these guys, even though I disagree, especially with Hayek, I, I respect both of these guys because they're both very honest about the fact that if you, pers- if you have this kind of free market ethos or whatever, it's going to make a lot of people's lives worse. For Hayek, be- like in other words, if you pursue freedom to this end, you don't care about any other larger collective sort of um, values. 
a lot of people are going to get fucked over. It's not going to just, it's not going to be an idyllic experience or something like that, but right. because human freedom of which they imagine almost entirely in the world of like sort of commerce and private property, they don't worry about the freedom to like have education or, the, or those sorts right, of freedoms. Right. But like that stuff is so paramount and important. And I care about it so much at Liberty uh, that, yeah, it sucks that people are going to be fucking homeless and dispossessed so and you, stuff like that. But you know, so basically it's like, darwinism it's basically it's, yeah it's, it's basically just like listen i didn't make this world but if you don't kill you gonna get killed yeah i think so, so sorry think, yeah. poor people but we are at the top and we're gonna make sure y'all stay down because right. it's the only way it's the only way i can provide for my family Right. And so those, those, yeah, right. So yeah, like my family, which is like, yeah, like my fourth divorce and my kids just, are gay. It, so it's I've just, disowned it's, them, but you I, know, it's just Walter White. We watched Breaking Bad. We watched right. all of that and we watched him be like, it's from my family. And then he blows up a fucking meth lab. Mm-hmm. It's from my family. And he's killing all these people. He's like killing a guy with a garage or whatever. From my family. Or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that's like, actually, he's a pretty good reflection of this in a sense. Um, but yeah, I mean, like, I think that that's what's interesting about like a lot of the conservatives in that way is that like, even if they often agree with, uh, I don't know that the system's fucked up, you know, cause sometimes you can get them to admit like, okay, but you know, very clearly there are people in, in let's say Spartan conditions who are very smart, but are held back. So, you know, I think a lot of them would be like, and this is true of just all new neoliberals, like, you know, we'll, we'll create a situation where we will, we truly will find who the greatest and and fiercest and smartest are like in other words they don't have a problem with creating a system such that like the system divides us between you know the the equipped and the ill-equipped and the ill-equipped are gonna get just fucking deal with it sorry that you gotta flip burgers for the rest of your life and who gives a shit um they're fine with doing that they just want to make sure that the system accurately appraises who are the the wheat from the chaff and that's the thing that has to be basically undermined um, that's why, by the way, returning to the issue of debt forgiveness, the fact I don't give a fuck that some people who are actually doing well are going to be helped out by this because ultimately I, I, I do think universal systems are good. Right. Um, and the funny thing too, is that people forget the whole thing is shaped like a fucking pyramid. Right. So in other words, yes, you are going to help some people that are, who are making above the median income, right. That probably don't need this in the sheer sense of the word. But there are, by the very basic structure of of a capitalist system, far fewer of those people than right. the people that are going to be helped out. So, what is your unique take on the de- debt forgiveness? Have you said it? it? Well, again, have I don't been, have a. Have you been saying it? I don't have a unique. You know, I was going to say I don't your, have a unique take. My point. Your is take. That, your take. Your your takes tend to take t- like twenty minutes, and I'm like, wait, <laughs> I'm sorry. What? What I is the, my time? Okay. What is the? <laughs> no, no, no. But look, point? my point. I don't have a unique take but the thing that i think we should focus more on is uh why are people looking at this so differently from the rest of political issues that are if we're rational about it very similar in other words we structure taxes not to help you know only poor people very obviously we we do tax a uh, we call tax forgiveness we do all kinds of benefits for people who have assets and things like that and we don't look at them as particularly problematic. So what I think is at hand is people are presented to, as I mentioned before, different kinds of political issues. Some political issues are, are given as the background structure of the world. There's a saying about like uh, liberalism generally is like a lot of times liberals won't like a particular thing uh, or uh, on a moral level, but they'll decide it's necessary for the functioning of the system or whatever. So they might not like the idea that there's poverty, but the things that create poverty, they might say, well, you kind of have to have those in place or whatever. Right. Um, so what I'm saying is, is that people should be very skeptical and, and investigate, you know, what is given to them in politics. The, the fact that um, this is highlighted as, you know, we don't have to do this. Isn't it fucked up that we're doing this? Isn't it helping the wrong kinds of people. I mean, basically every kinds of policy, all of the basic institutions of our government and our system, that's how we should feel the same way, but we are given very specific, very, you know, issues like this to be supposedly critical of. So what do we do? 
I uh, guess kill ourselves. I think, I think that's the only thing we can do. I think you're no, right. I don't know. I mean, like that's all it's like, we've talked about this stuff in the past. There's, there's, you know, there's a longer conversation about like how to organize and what to do about this or whatever. But, well, you know, I have some friends that are going to get their debt relieved. Yeah. And um, I'm happy for them. Me too. And because I never had any debt and I know what that's like. And it's good. It's I mean, real, I feel, look, you, it's, it's such a fucking trap too, because like a lot of those people, I feel, I mean, I guess we should say something a little bit just about the fact that like, there's a bunch of people this is not going to help. Not because it's not um, helping in some small sense, but like they're not, this doesn't, I mean, some people have like hundred thousand dollars, you know, six figure debt. Um, and this isn't yeah. going to touch it. Yeah. Um, but you know, for the people that it does touch, it's like, man, it's going to help a lot of people. Like I I've, I've been able to take on shitty part-time jobs. I've been able to, you know, go travel here to do this or ch- take a risk all because mm-hmm. I didn't have any debt. And it's like right. the idea that like, man, people, there's going to be millions of people who are just going to have this big breath of relief and be able to like, you know, even if it doesn't pay all of it, maybe it'll pay most of it and they can get out from under this debt and be able to like start their lives. And that, and they're going to be more likely to vote for Democrats because of it. And yeah, hopefully, you know, you know, I'm, I'm again, pretty, uh, cynical or not, uh, I'm at least skeptical of, of how much the democratic party can be used as a vehicle for meaningful change in the world, let's say, but you know, this is a, I, I hope that the lesson that, which I I'm very skeptical will be learned, but like, I'm hoping the lesson from the democratic party is that like the, there is a connection between us doing material things for certain constituencies and them liking us and voting for us. Um, you, you know, hope that there's of, a, you hope that there's a correlation between that. Yeah, I mean, look, there's a do you like. Think, do you think Biden, like in two years, he could be like, if y'all vote for me again, I'll do it again. I'd love that. I think that's great. Like, I, could, <laughs> could you could you get away with doing that as a politician, like kind of bribing the country? Like, I mean, I guess that's what every single politician does. I mean, that's what yeah. I'm, this is. Let, let me just mention that real quick because it fucking kills me. Because like a bunch of conservatives that I've talked to have said that like, oh, he's just paying for votes. And then I'm like, I, I mentioned this. Like, well, okay, so if you vote for somebody that, because they cut your taxes, how is that not exactly? The same thing. It's another good example of like what uh, uh, the free market. Yeah, exactly. Well, but that, that's the point, which is like it's because they don't think any. I mean, half of them think taxation is itself bad in a form of theft, which I think is a completely incoherent way to think about the world. But but either way, the point is like that should jump out uh, to most people as an obvious analogy, but it isn't because this is being I think uh, in a form of special pleading presented to people like some weird thing that really we should be worried about or something like that. Right. Um, but the point is like, no, you're supposed to vote on the basis of your interests and the country's interests. And if a politician de- delivers you for you at a material basis, you're you're supposed to like that and be influenced by it. That's how right. the system is supposed to operate. Well, you know, I voted for Trump twice. And you know, after <laughs> this, yeah, I think I'm going to I've been meaning to talk to you about that. I think I'm going to give the uh, the Democrat another chance. Mm hmm. I'm yeah. going to give him a chance. Well, and I guess in, just in the sense of organizing, I'll also say like that this, remember that this happened because of political pressure. This happened because they were really worried about a certain cohort of people not voting and, and we can get more and we should try to get more. Like that's I, almost, so it's almost like cohorts need to get together and not vote. I mean, potentially I would say the issue is they need to get together and organize and then build a strategy from there. And, it could be in certain circumstances withholding your vote is, is no. the thing to do. Hey, everybody, if there are any niggas listening, I'm calling all <laughs> niggas not to vote in the next election <laughs> so we can show them during the midterms what we can do for them in the presidential. Niggas right. unite! <laughs> N-A-V! In you. <laughs> niggas yeah. against voting! <laughs> um. But yeah, so it's, uh, I guess like I don't know if there's a way to sum all this up. But like, and if I thought I thought that's what I just did. <laughs> oh, did you? Yeah, I, was like, I thought that's what niggas against voting was. But well, I'm just saying like, don't. This is a shitty thing to be against. I'll say, it's a shitty thing to be against. 
Like there's all kinds of policies that only help fucking rich people. And even that help the middle class way more than the working class. But of course, but of course, but if you're rich, you know, if you give a poor man a thousand dollars, he'll blow it on, uh, you know, rims and chains and, Mm -hmm. and sombreros and, and stuff like that. But if you give a rich man a thousand dollars, he'll turn it into a million. That's fantastic. So giving rich people subsidies and tax, tax, tax breaks, they are actually utilizing that money while poor people, you know, no specific demographic will waste it on watermelon and Hennessy and sit on their porch. <laughs> so they and, spend, so they spend the money thereby patronizing local businesses and helping the economy. You don't understand. You don't, <laughs> yeah. you don't understand. Apparently I don't. Oh, and I should, we also should have said this. I just want to throw it out there that like, and even if you you pretend that your your disagreement with this your criticism is that like you don't think it's fiscally responsible that money was in large part never going to be paid back and that's what we we are now which is that like this doesn't this touches a lot of debt there's still a shit ton of outstanding debt um more outstanding debt than's going to be forgiven by a lot and most of it will never be paid back the people who have it or like who who owe on it have have not the capacity to pay it back, much less its interest in many cases. Um, And so just pretending that it was going to be this reliable source of revenue, that's just fucking pretend. So the only thing it's really doing in that case is acting as an albatross around the necks of people that would otherwise be having like, you know, contributing in a more meaningful way. Well said. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I'm tired. Do you have anything you want to talk about or uh, Um, plug? No, not really. I mean, check out my, if you want to hear me talk about stuff, but instead of like debt, you would like to hear me talk about like Thor and Superman and Captain America and things like that. Check out uh, the comic Canon revival. You can get it where you get all of your podcasts. I and, was on uh, that episode static shock. Yes, you did. And you're, you're going to come back Jared to... and others go to that one. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And I'm going to come back and we're going to talk about Ashita no Joe. Exactly. An anime. I won't pronounce it. An anime about a boxer. Uh oh, are you there? Hello. Yeah, I'm here. Oh, okay, cool. Um, all yeah. right. Well, um, you know, I'm like I said, I'm tired and it's late, and I'm at my friend's house, so I do want to hang out with him. So uh, <laughs> okay. Bye. Bye. You know, I, I love you. I love you too. Yeah, it's good. we should yeah. hang out. You should come to South Carolina, man. It's been okay. So you're in South Carolina. Okay, cool. Yeah. So you are you're living there now. Yeah. Okay, cool. And your address? Two of them, like, well, do you want my address or just my social? Uh, uh, let's get let's get both. Okay, yeah, yeah. And your mom's maiden, and then we'll call mm-hmm. it a night. Okay, yeah. bye, Jared. Bye. Thank Love you. you.